Howdy guys, my name is Rod Stewart and I've been an eVelocity mentor for two years with Team Big Brother Big Sister and their three wheel car affectionately known as the Walsley, this is it here. The Walsley was powered by a 350 watt standard class motor uh, in 2018 and upgraded to a 1 kilowatt open class in 2019. We've had a few wins, we've had a lot of fun, and we've learned a lot, so expect a great experience getting involved with eVelocity. This presentation was going to be done live on, on build day one at ARA, but a nasty little virus has put us all into lockdown, so I've offered to make a short video about design ideas for you guys, and we'll post it on my YouTube channel, High Fly Rod. I'm not too good at filming and editing, so I will try to make this video in one take, so just bear with me. The eVelocity team is putting together some awesome PowerPoint presentations to help you, um, so check out on um, eVelocity.co.nz. I'll just quickly show you their website. So this is their website, and if you go in here you'll see the two pages and what I'm going to be talking about are these three races under performance head-to-head -head drag and deceleration Jim Carner and economy run um, let's get the picks back up so um, the most important thing that you've got to do is choose um, which category you're going to be in and um, and, the, and there's four parts to each category, so you need to choose whether you're going to have a bike or a cart. And um, bikes can be a little bit simpler because uh, the parts are readily available. Uh, carts require more design and build input, resulting in a bigger but more rewarding challenge for your team. The second choice you need to make is whether you're going to go 350 watt standard class or 1 kilowatt open class. With standard class you will use a kit supplied by eVelocity and this will cost your team less money. With open class you will need to source the motor, controller, batteries, charger and accelerator yourselves. In open class you will be supplied with a circuit breaker in about mid 2020 that limits you to 1 kilowatt of power. This keeps the playing field level, level for all 1 kilowatt open class teams. So there are three races and um, these will be soon outlined in detail under school resources on the eVelocity website. They are updated from time to time and can change slightly for different race tracks. So keep an eye on that, especially just before race day. Okay, the first one I'm going to go on to is the head-to-head -head drag race and your maximum speed from standstill will be measured at the end of a 60 metre run. Previously a police camera was used, but this may change to electronic measuring for 2020 in this area here. Um, then you have a 14 metre stop zone. You will not score if you can't stop in that distance. So if you go past that line, you bug it. So I'll just uh, get into the design features. There's your police cop with his speed camera. Um, I'm going to get into the main features if you want a really good speed out of your car. The first thing you've got to do is get your speed right. And electric motors have a maximum RPM, so you need to get your gear ratio right. Small gear, big gear. Um, search gear ratios calculator, and I'm just going to give you a very quick look at this. So for the walls, we had a max speed on the motor of 4,200 RPM. We know that we have a 10.4 to 1 ratio, we just went for first gear only, 700mm wheel, 1 to 1 diff ratio, hit the calculator and it comes up with 53 kilometers an hour as an expected top speed. In reality it's a bit less than that because you've got drag of the wheels on the ground plus the aerodynamics, um, the air drag. So let's get into this um, cal uh, gear calculator. Back to my picks again. Um, the 350 watt motor actually has a uh, built in 5 to 1 gearbox, and that's suited for a large cycle wheel. So you can tweak this ratio with sprockets from the output of the motor to the, to the actual wheel. 
Um, the next thing I want to talk about is low roll resistance, and the big thing with that is a large diameter wheel and pump your tyres up. Bike tyres take 60 psi, so take a pump to the race day and pump your tyres up hard. Um, you need to keep weight down, less weight equals faster acceleration and better speed. So a light driver and think about weight the whole time you're building the car. Um, brakes. Now if you're going to stop, if you end up with a fast car and you're going to stop, you need front and back brakes. This is an example of a disc brake that someone uh, that a team has put on the front one of the front wheels on a car. Um, so think about that, front and brake brakes. You need to think about streamlining. Now this is an ex awesome example here. It's just the driver's head sticking out. You put a, bo a, a pod, bodies and fairings. These guys here did an awesome job. Tapers back to nothing back here. There was a pod that they were going to put on the front of that. They actually won the drag race with this in the one kilowatt class. On bikes, lying down, leaning forward, you can see here they've got the handlebars down the, down the front forks. And uh, if you've got a scooter, then sit on the scooter rather than stand up. It gives you way less drag. It's, um, and there's a fairing on the back of that bike there. We're in good stead in New Zealand, that's the Cardinal Britain, John Britton's bike. Have a look at the position. And of course Bert Munro, the world's fastest Indian, amazing design. And Roly Free, who actually took all his clothes off and lay in his underpants on top of his bike to break a record. So that's the drag racing. and the next one I want to talk about is the Jim Gymkhana. Now this year the Jim Gymkhana has been combined with the street race. So there will be some battens to be shifted from plastic buckets on course and you will start in a garage, 2.5 metres square and it's a timed race, you're basically going up and down the course uh, three times and uh, the exact race for format will be clearly outlined soon under school resources on the eVelocity website so check out eVelocity.co.nz I'll just show you the uh, bucket and batten. So you buy a couple of $2 buckets from Mitre 10 and you can practice with that. So the design features uh, the design features for the Jim Carner. Um, the number one thing I think is, is steering. Um, when you're going through these cones, they're 3.5 metres apart and you need to have a good turning radius. So, uh, there's a, Les has just made an amazing PowerPoint talking about steering. I'm not going to go into any detail, but there it is on the website. Amazing information if you want to get your steering right. It's not an easy one, steering. So, um, good brakes, so you need good brakes, in, 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 you've got to stop for, at the buckets and on the corners. Storage, you need a place to store the baton in your car, just think of a tube or something. Uh, acceleration, now, it's probably more important to have acceleration than high speed in this race, so gear your bike for high acceleration. And a low centre of gravity is important. Look at this car here, beautiful. Look, he's about an inch off the ground. I wouldn't want to go over rocky ground. Um, so that's basically everything on the Jim Carner. And now I want to talk about the economy run, where you'll go around a go-kart track like this. This is the Hamilton track, downhill, uphill here. And um, in the economy run... Um, the most important thing is amazing roll resistance. So you need a large diameter wheel again and skinny tyres and pump them up like crazy. Um, rock hard. Again lightweight, again aerodynamic and streamlined. You're, you're, you're after cutting back on that drag. 
driver position, lying down, keep your head down. Um, I'm not sure, yeah, keep your head down. And the, the next thing I'm going to talk about, there's two types of drive. There's one where you've got a, a motor with a, a chains and sprockets, and then you have a hub motor. This is actually the back wheel of a, a bike with a freewheel sprocket, and you'll see once I get it going, it just runs for ages and ages and ages with absolutely only the friction of the bearings. So there's a real advantage in having a freewheel sprocket. If you use a hub motor, they can slow you down. Um, let's get to where I was reading here. Um, they can slow you down due to cogging, that's the magnets going past the coils, or regen braking. I really recommend turning regen braking off if you're uh, when you're doing the economy run. And the, the last thing is the techniques. Um, very, very quickly, slowly, slowly wins the race. So if this is not a fast race, this is a slow race. No throttle going downhill. No throttle going into the corners. Keep off the brakes and avoid hard cornering. Take the shortest path on the track. And one last tip, plug the energy monitor in just before you start the race. Um, and then uh, I'll just move quickly over here. One last thing I want to talk about. A good idea is to measure your drivers and ensure your vehicle design will easily fit your drivers. Try to get them sitting or lying comfortably in a driving position. Make a sketch and note down some critical measurements. Um, don't forget drivers could be bigger by race day, so um, allow for growth. And um, so hopefully this has given you an insight into some design uh, considerations when you're building your bike. Remember to keep checking the eVelocity New Zealand websites for dates, details of rules, races and ideas. And don't forget, safety first. Compulsory kit includes cotton overalls, gloves, sturdy shoes and a helmet. And I'll just put my helmet on to end this presentation. Eggs and heads both break when you hit the ground. Don't be an egg. Shit, that was so good.